Hi friends, my name is Amber and this is a lovely yarn podcast. Today is Monday, April 8th. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm really excited to be back and talking about um, some of the things that I've been working on, both crocheting and knitting. And I also have um, a couple life updates, which I will tag on at the end. And there might be a little giveaway sprinkled somewhere in the midst of this podcast. So, oh, and a giveaway announcement from the last podcast episode. So stay tuned for that as well. I'm going to go ahead and just get started. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, first of all, I hope you all are doing well. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Now let us, let us move on to <laughs> what you came here to watch, which is the knitting and crocheting content. So my first finished object is right here behind me. Actually, this is my only finished object. <laughs> I have whips. Uh, this is the only finished object I have. And I talked about this last episode and this is a prayer shawl that I made. When I talked about it last episode though, it was knit in a completely different yarn. It was knit in, um, Karen, it was a cotton yarn. It was Karen, some sort of cotton, cotton ripple cakes, I think. And yes, yeah, summer rain. And I decided I did not care for that yarn for a prayer shawl. It wasn't squishy and cozy enough. Um, so I ripped it out and I had purchased this yarn and I was at the time of my last podcast, I was waiting for it to arrive. I had purchased it from Amazon and this yarn is an ombre it's a lion brand yarn and it is called Harmony. So it's lion brand Mandela ombre in the colorway Harmony. As with everything, I will have the details listed down below in the video description though. So you don't have to take notes. You can just look at, look below. So I used two skeins of that yarn to crochet this. And this pattern is called Stormborn, the Stormborn wrap. And, um, so, uh, one of my viewers, I think it was Martha, she had commented how that was such an appropriate title for a wrap that I'm giving as a prayer shawl. And I think I know where she's going with that because, you know, sometimes when we're in the midst of trials in our life, it feels like just, it just feels like we're being tossed and shoved about and it's stormy and it, it you know, it's, it can be scary and but out of that, those storms, out of those trials are often born hope and, you know, biblically it, you know, the Bible says endurance, perseverance, hope, uh, all come out of our trials. So yeah, I, I like that. I never didn't even think of that, but I, was that you, Martha? I'm pretty sure. Um, but that was such a good, that was so, that was so good. And I actually like this pattern a lot for a crocheted prayer shawl. Most of the prayer shawls that I do make, um, I make crocheted versions. I do, I do also knit them, but it's just that typically when I find out somebody needs a prayer shawl, I don't want it to be taking forever for, for me to make it. And um, I can just crochet so much faster than I can knit. I knit that, or I crocheted this and I think four, three or four days. And again, that wasn't working on it solid. That was just working on it in my like time on the bookends of my day when I, when I sit down to knit or crochet. So, um, oh, I'm on, <laughs> I need to go. I need, I can see that I'm about to run out of storage on my phone. So I need to pause this, go and delete some stuff. And then I will be back and I will continue talking about this wrap. Okay, perfect. Now I have more room on my camera. I forget to do that. Um, <laughs> almost every time I film, I have to delete pictures or past podcast episodes. And I often forget to like, turn it on and it tells me, oh, you only have five minutes left in your storage. But getting back to the Stormborn Wrap, this is a pattern by For the Frills. You can find this on her blog for free, which I will, I think I'll just link to, I think, yeah, I'll just link to the pattern on Ravelry. And then that takes you to her blog post. And then from her blog post, you can purchase this if you want to purchase a pattern that you can print out, you can purchase that through Etsy. I don't think she has this pattern on Ravelry to purchase. Now I did end up purchasing the pattern because I wanted the chart and I'm glad that I ended up doing that because I, although I was a crocheter 
for years before I became a knitter. I feel like because I don't crochet as much anymore, I am much more proficient at reading knitting. Another thing with crocheting, if um, for those of you that don't crochet, you may not understand this, but when you crochet, so when you have your needle, your knitting needles, and you have all your stitches on your needles, you know where the start and the begin and the end of your row that you're working on is at because you run out of stitches on your needle. With crocheting, it can get a little bit trickier to read the beginnings and the ends. And some patterns will tell you to count the chain stitch as a stitch. Others will say you don't count that as a stitch. So I, I actually had started um, crocheting this just from the free pattern. And then I noticed that my stitches weren't working out right. So I thought I'm just gonna, I think the pattern was like $3.50 or something like that. So I ended up buying the pattern and with the pattern I got a chart and the chart is much, it's very helpful to me because I can just see where all the stitches are supposed to be placed. So um, I did buy it, but if you are co more comfortable with crocheting, you know, you could just do it free from her website. So. I think I said I used two balls of the Knit Picks Harmony. I forget how many yards are in each ball and I, I had saved one of the labels and I cannot find it this morning so I'm not sure where, I maybe I accidentally threw it away. But I had enough to knit a pretty good sized shawl as you can see. And this has already been blocked, it's actually ready to be given, I'm going to be taking it this afternoon. Uh, and then I had enough yarn to do three tassels. I like the tassels. I felt like it just gave it a bit of an updated, trendier look. I don't, I don't know who this is going to. I have some information, but I don't have, I don't have a full disclosure of who this is going to. Um, so I wanted to do something just, I don't know. I just kind of like went with how I felt with this. Um, and I did do a few adjustments to it, uh, like some of the places where you're supposed to do double crochet mesh, I did, like this is a half double crochet mesh rather than double. And then I didn't exactly do the border the same, so it was supposed to be all double crochets. I did some single crochets, just uh, mostly because I wanted a, um, a bit of a more rigid not rigid, but a little more structure of a border here on the end so that it, I don't know, I just like a more structured border on my crochet for a shawl. Um, and I, let me think if there was anything else. I used a size eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter. I don't know if that's what the pattern called for, but that is what I used because I liked what I got with that. So yeah, this is this is exactly what I was thinking of when I when I think of a prayer shawl, I think of something that is like a big, warm, cozy hug. This is way better. I've learned my lesson. I will not be using cotton for prayer shawls because I just don't like cotton very much. I don't really care for working with cotton. It has its place, but I've decided not for prayer shawls. So um, yeah, this. Oh, and some of you asked. Um, how I do the prayer shawl. So a woman in the church that I attend, a woman and I started it several years. Oh, it was before, it was like in 2018, I think we started the prayer shawl ministry at our church. And um, I'm no longer like in charge of that. I've, but I do participate in it. Um, when we first began it, when we first started the group, we would meet, I forget how often we would meet. We would just meet together at the church and work on our shawls and just kind of like made it a fellowship thing. I don't, we don't do that anymore. So at least not that I'm aware of. We are, we are currently attending a different campus of the church that we attend. So my son Ian is actually, um, became the worship leader at a different campus of the church we attend. So the church we attend has four different campuses. We used to go to the main campus, which is the biggest one. That is where the prayer shawl ministry was originally started. So I'm not as connected to that campus anymore because we drive to this other campus because I love to see my son leading worship. Um, but it's still going on. We still have like uh, several bins full of prayer shawls that we worked on. I actually personally like to make them as I know they're needed. So and it's lovely when I can 
when I have, when I either know the person or um, I have some information that I can pray specifically about as I'm working on it. So, but like I said, this one, I got some limited information so that I had some direction um, as I was making it and how I could pray. And then I also just make them personally for people in my life that I know who um, are going through something. And um, yeah, I'll just make them that way too. So I hope that answers that question. I'm going to put this aside. And I guess I should have mentioned the sweater that I'm wearing when I started because I know people are going to ask. Although this looks totally like it could be handmade, it is not. I bought this at a secondhand shop several months ago. I love it. This is a wonderful sweater. I think it's like American Eagle brand. Um, I love the color because it's such a happy, cheery color. Yellow is my happy color. I don't have a lot of yellow. I'm like, I don't have really much yellow yarn. I don't have a lot. I guess I do have some yellow. I'm looking into my closet. I can, I have a yellow dress. I have some yellow sweaters. Uh, this particular shade of yellow is like spring yellow and it's got maybe some green undertones, but I love this sweater for wearing over dresses, which is how I'm wearing it today. Oh goodness. Sorry. So, and I've decided this is the perfect length for me to wear over a dress and so and I like the fit of it so this is going to become my model sweater for when I'm trying to make a sweater knit a sweater myself to be worn over dresses because I have lots of sweaters that I have knit with the idea that I'm gonna wear this over a dress and then it's never the right length or it's it doesn't drape correctly or it's not wide enough or it's too wide and then I look like a potato sack. So uh, this I love over dresses and so I decided this weekend actually that I'm going to use this kind of as a template um, for when I'm making sweaters and it is a drop shoulder but I like the width of it. I like the length of it. So yeah that's something you can do if you're not aware of that. If you have a sweater that is like a store-bought one that you really really love the way it fits you, you can use that as a template as you're trying to figure out sizing when you're hand knitting a sweater or crocheting a sweater. Okay, so Stormborn Wrap. I think I said everything that I needed to say about that. That was my only finished object. So let's move into my my works in progress, which the first one is another. It's Stormborn 2.0. It's another one because I enjoyed the pattern so much and it went so quickly I decided to knit another one and this is also a prayer shawl um, so let me show you what I have and I I just started this last night worked on it a little bit and I'm halfway through a row there you can see this is a really pretty color this is another lion brand yarn I have the tag for this one respawn 100% recycled polyester so again, another thing I'm going to say, I prefer to use natural yarns, but I'm when, when I'm giving them as prayer shawls, I always do something that can be hand washed and machine dried because I don't expect people to care, to, to have to put so much care into something that they're given. Uh, so this is, this skein is huge. It is the, it's called the bonus bundle and it has 658 yards in it. Um, it's a 284 gram skein. I have it here. I actually bought two of these from Joanne Fabrics two years ago and I bought it because I love the color. This is called Cider. It's a little bit richer in real life. It's showing up a little bit lighter on the screen, but it is um, a really beautiful orangey brown color and so yes I'm making this and I don't have a ton left but what I I mean I, crocheting I just love how fast crocheting is uh, cute little bobbles my crochet bobbles are so much better than my knitting bobbles I actually really dislike knitting bobbles I just really dislike it. I avoid patterns often that have bobbles, even if I like the pattern, the look of the pattern, because knitting bobbles kind of drives me a little crazy. It's It feels so fiddly to me. Crocheting bobbles, on the other hand, are a totally different story. And not only are they easier than knitting bobbles, but they are so much more defined. I feel like my knitting bobbles are flattened 
just pancakey, but my crocheted bobbles just pop. <laughs> um, so yes, I, I really am enjoying working on this one as well and praying for the person that I'm making it for. All right, moving on to my next whip. I'm so excited about this one, friends. And I have talked about my plans for this in at least two prior podcasts, but this is actually my Sonder sweater that I'm making. This is a pattern by The Petite Knitter, and here it is, and I'm loving it. These colors were inspired, this color palette was inspired by Stephanie of Edible Thoughts Makes, which um, she has a podcast here on on YouTube as well as an Instagram account. You can look her up. But she had knit this sweater in these two colors and I absolutely love them. So this red is called Barn Door and this, what, this actually kind of looks white or creamy on my camera screen, but it's actually a very light pink and it is called Pink Salt. And this is, this yarn is Pearl Soho Good Wool. And I'm really enjoying knitting with this. Uh, this is my first time using this particular yarn from Pearl Soho. So I decided, I did a gauge swatch with the size four needles, which is what the pattern calls for. And I got 22 stitches per four inch uh, as my gauge. And the gauge called for, the pattern called for a gauge of 24. So I ended up going down well, so my thought was, okay, I'm just going to keep the size four needles and I could just knit the smaller size. So according to my measurements, I would want to knit the size four, which gives a finished bust circumference of 41 and a half, I think, inches. Um, and I like to have, so I have like a 37 bust. So I, I thought that'll give me like four and a half um, inches of some positive ease. And so I thought, well, I could go down and that way that would kind of um, balance out my gauge, go down, stay on the size four needles and go down to the size three. So I was going to do that at first. And then I was looking at my gauge swatch and I wasn't, I was not overly crazy about how loose it looked, um, a little bit, I don't want to say see-through because it wasn't see-through, but it was just a little, it was, the gauge was a little too, um, what is the rec the correct word? It, I did, it wasn't dense enough. The fabric was not dense enough. Let me just put it that way. So what I ended up doing is going down to a size three and that got me to a 23, 23 and a half inches per four, or I'm sorry, stitches per four inches doing the size three needle. So that's what I ended up doing. However, I am questioning myself <laughs> because, um, well, let me, let me show you here. I'm going to put this on and I'm going to, I'm going to show you why I'm questioning myself. I've done all of the increases except for one more increase. And the next increase is going to take me up. I'm telling you guys this because I, I would like some advice. So right now I have 260 stitches on my needles. And when I put, lay this all out and this is pre-blocking, of course, you know, this fits me just how I want it to fit me. It, when I do the last set of decrease or increases, which is coming almost like I'll go through almost all of the color work. I'll just have one little motif left bef and then um, before that one last tiny motif, I will put in another set of increases and that's going to take me from 260 stitches to 312. So that's adding 52 stitches more and I feel like I'm not going to like that. I feel like it's going to be too big and I'm going to be disappointed. So this is where I'm confused. This is where I don't, I'm lacking confidence. Um, because there is more color work after the last set of increases, I, I cannot, <laughs> I'm going to have to adjust the color work chart and the color work, the little, I can't show, I don't want to show you the chart because this is of course a paid for pattern. Um, but I'm going to have to adjust the little color work motif to make it fit with, because I'm not going to have enough stitches. And so I'm trying to figure that out. 
Um, if you guys have any advice on how to do that, I, I really wish I would have stuck with the size three. This is, I, this is what I do often. It's not often that I knit too small. It's I often knit too big. Um, and then I regret it. So I feel like I'm going to have to just maybe get to that spot and then wing it, <laughs> which is okay. I will be fine. It's a little bit intimidating, but I've been knitting long enough that I figure, okay, I'm just going to change the motif a bit to make it work because I literally, if I mean, if this fits me perfectly right now, another 52 stitches increased on this yoke. I feel like it's, and this is pre-blocked. This is going to stretch a little bit too. I just don't want to add another 52 stitches into this yoke. It's going to, I'm going to be swimming in it and I'm probably not going to like it as much. I think what maybe happens is I'm smaller, like I have more petite shoulders maybe. Um, and then I'm not, I don't really have a defined waist. I'm, I don't know what you call that <laughs> body type, but, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any advice. I'm sure this has happened to other people after my Birkin disaster a couple of years ago where I did not listen to my gut instinct and I just kept forging forward and then I completely had to rip that sweater out after I got the whole way through the yoke and part of the body. I'm just not willing to take that chance again. I'm going to listen to my knitting instinct and I'm not increasing anymore. So I think I'm just going to have to keep going until I get to where I'm supposed to increase and then I'm going to have to play around with the rest of the chart to make it work. Is that what you would do? Please let me know. Uh, I'm only like... Let's see, 32, I'm um, 11 rows from my next section where I would be increasing. So I'm not very far off. So let me know what I should do if this is something that you guys have dealt with before because uh, I love this sweater and I want to like wearing it. I want to feel comfortable wearing it and I just don't think that increasing is a good idea. So I'm not increasing anymore. But another reminder to me, because I was questioning, but I was like, no, I'm going to go by the gauge. I'm going to go by the pattern. I just feel like, and I, I know I'm not the only one that does this. I feel like I often just knit things too big. And um, I just need to get better. I need to get better about listening to myself when my knitting instinct is screaming at me to not do something or to do something you know? So, so yeah, this is, I love it. I love color work. I posted a picture of this on Instagram and I was, I said about, it's my color work is my favorite knitting technique. It's so magical to me. I just, it, you just like you're knitting and then you see these pictures appear in your knitting and it's so much fun. I love it. Um, I like this yarn a lot. I like the feel of it. I like it's, it feels soft, but it also feels a little bit sticky. So, and I'm very curious to see how the sweater will block. I actually have a whole nother, uh, quantity sweaters quantity of good, the good wool yarn in a light blue color that I had purchased last fall. I think it was during one of their 20% off sales and I purchased it for a specific sweater in mind. And so, um, I've not knitted that yet but I have it on my shelf and I'm really, I'm really happy. And I think when it's on, when this yarn is on sale, it's like $12 a skein for 300 and what is it? 378, 383 yards. So that is super reasonable in my opinion. Yeah. So I bought three skeins of the red and one skein of the pink salt and I'll definitely have enough of the pink salt. And I'm hoping I have enough of the, the barn door, the red color. Uh, anything else that I wanted to say? Let me just check my notes just to make sure because I am taking notes in my knitting book for this. No, no, just stay tuned. Offer me some advice uh, and if you have any on how you can adapt that, um, like the size adjustments in a yoke that you have to do increases, but there's more color work that comes after. Yeah, let me know. Oh, also, I just wanted to say, so this pattern uses uh, short wrap and turns for the short rows. I've heard people complain about doing short rows. I actually really like them. I don't know why. I find them really enjoyable to do. And it's, I think it's because 
it's so cool to me that you can do these short rows and you get extra fabric only where only between those those like they're not even increases just in that area it's just another one of those magical things to me but I will say anytime a pattern calls for a wrap and turn I just automatically use a German short row because I think that they are much better hidden I mean you can definitely see the short the short rows you can see let me see if I can you can see them but the wrap and turns when I was a beginner knitter and I would just do wrap and turns I you could really see my wrap and turns I was never happy with them so now I just you can do that you can use them interchangeably and if you don't know how to do that it's not hard but you can just google it and you'll get instructions on how to do that how to convert wrap and turns to German short rows okay moving on I have my serene socks by uh, three by the sea designs and I want to show you I don't have a ton of progress on these because I've been knitting on my sonder and I was trying to get the uh, I wanted to get the parasol done but I have um, I have this much now so I have the heel flap done and I'm now currently working on the gusset decreases and this is so nice and squishy this is a DK weight yarn by Sock Obsession Yarns in the extra solar color, which I, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, but we are having a solar eclipse here uh, today in the United States. So, but I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here. That's just it. I thought, oh, that's a fitting name for today. This is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon yarn. I bought this a long time ago. So, um, I know that this dyer still dies, but when I checked last time I was preparing for my podcast, she did not have this particular colorway, but she has other DK weights. And, um, yeah. So speaking of that last week, uh, so three by the sea, the gales of three by the sea designs actually sent me that pattern as a gift. They sent me the fingering weight and the DK weight version. Actually, I think now after my last podcast, I went and looked, and I think you get both versions when you purchase the pattern. I could be wrong about that. You'll have to look if you go to buy the pattern. Um, I'll link their, their pattern page down below. So, but the, the sweet ladies there contacted me and said they wanted to send me that pattern as a gift. And they also wanted to send an extra or they, they didn't send me the extra, but they wanted to also offer one to give away to my viewers of my podcast. So I had you guys last, last podcast episode. I had said, if you're interested, because I know not everybody is a sock knitter. So I said, if you're interested, please just mention in the comments down below that you are interested in, in being put in for the giveaway for the, the socks, the sock pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to announce that winner now. And what I want to, what I'm going to do is I'll announce the winner here. Um, and then I will just, you need to email me your information, like how the ladies can get a hold of you to send you your pattern. So you need to email me, which my email is in the, the video description box down below this video. Okay. So email me and then I will send that information to three by the sea designs and then they can send you the pattern directly since it is an electronic file. It's not, it's not hard. So let's pause this for a minute. I'm going to pick the viewer right now and then I'm going to announce it. Okay. So I used a random comment picker off of the internet to pick the comment and the winner is right here, Sue Garavet. And I already remember, I mean, I already forget the numbers. Was it 7223 or something like that? It doesn't matter because I'm going to have a picture of it right here. So Sue, if you could please email me using the email address down below in the video description, I will get you get you connected with the ladies at three by the seas design and they can send you your sock pattern. Now I'm not even done with my whips yet, but I'm just going to keep going with this because I'm excited about this. So that pattern was written for both DK or fingering weight socks. And I 
am doing the finger or the DK weight version because I had a um, skein of DK that I've had for years that I have not that I've been wanting to use. So it was like the perfect opportunity. Now I had also bought some DK weight yarn off of Carista of Sweet Mountain Fiber. I think it was last fall. And I didn't bring the skein here with me, but when I when she sent me the order, when she sent me my order, she also sent me a, another skein to give away here on my podcast of another skein of this is also DK weight sock yarn. So I have this to give away today. Now I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to limit this to viewers in the United States just because the shipping is a lot of money to ship it out of the states. I mean, shipping in the United States is ridiculous too anymore. I think it is everywhere. But um, yeah, so let me show you what's in here because there's more than just yarn. So let's go with the like the fun first. Here is the skein. This is a sock set uh, that Carista sent to be given away, and this is called Paddleboard Set. Oh, so summery, right? Paddle boarding in the summer. Well, I paddle board in the summer, not any time of the year, other year here. This is hand dyed in Cody, Wyoming. It is 75% 25% superwash merino and nylon. Okay, so let me get close up here. All right, so Carista sent that. Um, but she also sent this little tool, which is really neat to keep in your project bag. Um, so it has the, like a sharp end over there. I wonder what you use that for. Huh? I don't know. But the thing that I would be more interested in is the little crocheted end. This would be perfect because often I will keep a crochet hook in my knitting bags because if I drop stitches, it's really easy to pick those stitches up using a crochet hook. So this is a perfect little tool for that. And then she sent a little Sweet Mountain Crafts sticker. It's like, it feels like it's made, I think it's made out of wood. Yeah, it's like it's made out of really like thin wood. And then there is um, a little short story in there. Yeah. So anyway, just please let me know down below that you are interested in winning this and tell me where you are in the United States. And again, I really apologize to my international friends um, that I... I'm glad that I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that the three by three by C designs that they offered that pattern. It's so hard for me sometimes because to do giveaways, um, you know, I'm paying postage and my donations I get through coffee and stuff. Um, when you guys send those donations that often, you know, a lot of that goes back into the podcast. So that helps with sending things, but it's still really outrageous. My son, Sergey just sent a package to Ukraine and it was, over a hundred dollars and now that is maybe because of everything that's going on over there I don't know um, but it's just it's really expensive so yeah I'm sorry that I'm, I can't include you in this giveaway for this physical item but for those of you in the United States if you'd like to be considered for this giveaway please just comment below that you would love to let me know where you're um, watching from in the States and I will pick a winner on the next episode. So Sue, get in touch with me and um, yeah, let's move on. I have one last work in progress and I actually had forgotten all about this. I have a shelf in my closet where I keep my whips and I don't typically keep a lot of whips, but I was kind of looking at it and trying to decide what I wanted to do with the projects and I found a pair of socks that I had completely forgotten about. And I think they've been on the needles for like three, four years maybe. Uh, they're in this really cute bag by This Handmade Life. I noticed she just did like a spring update over, I think it was just yesterday. I love her bags. I have so many of Olivia's bags. Okay, so here are the socks. And um, I finished the first one. So this, <coughs> excuse me. 
This is some sort of Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn that I do not have the label for. That's how long these things have been at work in progress. I lost the label and the toe is also some sort of Hawthorne. Um, but, and I think the Hawthorne only has 300 and some yards, like 380 some yards, although it's a fingering weight. So that is why I think I decided to use a contrasting toe. I don't even remember. It's, that's just because, you know, I didn't write anything down and I completely forgot about these. So I finished off, I think all I had to do was finish the toe and seam it shut. So this one's done. Oh, that is a really cute stitch marker that I got from, um, River of a Knitter's Homestead. That was a while ago though. I don't know that, I don't think she has those on her Etsy shop right now, but she has really beautiful yarn. I'll put her shop down below as well. And then this is how far I am on my second one. So yeah, I'm going to finish these and they'll probably go to my husband. Um, I don't know. I might just stick them in the drawer. When I knit stuff and I don't know who I'm going to give it to, I just stick it in the drawer. And then if I need a knitted gift, it's easy because I have stuff in there. I have a area in one of my drawers that I just keep extra knitted stuff that I would, you know, consider maybe giving as a gift. But yeah, I just did, I'm knitting these on a little bit bigger than I typically do. So 64 stitches, but on a size, I think this is size one and a half US, one and a half needle. Uh, no, it's a one. Okay. I usually use zeros, but it's a one. So it is, it's, it's coming out a bit wider than my socks normally are, but it's still not, it's not wide. It'll be fine. It will be fine. But that is all I have for that. And so my knitting portion, like my crafting knitting portion is done, but I want to give a little bit of some life updates because I've had some people ask um, about some things. And then I also have had some just exciting news in my life. And so I wanted to share just a little bit, just a short snippet of that. But so today's April 8th and we are supposed to be experiencing a solar eclipse. Um, today. Now where I am in Western Pennsylvania, I am supposed, we are in the 97% totality area, which means that the sun will be 97% covered here when this happens, which I think it's supposed to be at its peak at 3.30 PM Eastern time today. So that's kind of exciting. I remember the last time I remember like a really big deal solar eclipse. We had one in 2017 where it was like, we still had, we, it was like, we could see a crescent of it. I have a picture of the kids on the trampoline and there are like little crescent moon shapes all over the trampoline from the sun reflecting, which was really, that was really cool. Uh, I didn't even realize it at the time that it was on there. When I was looking at the photo later, I noticed it, but, um, the kids were, that was 2017. The kids were much smaller seven years ago, but I remember being in fourth grade and, um, there being a solar eclipse and it, I feel like they took us outside and I don't remember any of us having special glasses. I feel like they just said, don't look directly at the sun, but we went out to experience it. I don't think it was a hundred percent totally covered when that happened because I remember it getting dark, but not like nighttime dark. Um, it's funny, all the schools around here that I know of ha are letting their kid, the kids out early, which kind of like makes me laugh because so I've read several articles online. Some of the articles, some of the school districts have decided to do that because they want their kids to be able to experience this, this, um, astronomical phenomenon with their family, which is kind of weird because a lot of families work nowadays. So I'm assuming that might be more of a, uh, burden to parents. <laughs> I'm not, I, you know, school districts can do what they want to do, but it's just so weird to me. Um, and then I also read articles uh, for an, uh, from another local school district that they are were concerned about the safety of their students, so they wanted them at home during the time of the eclipse. And I was like, "Are we babyfying our children or what?" Like I don't know. I was just like, I was I was literally like taken aback by that. Like you just tell your kids don't look at the sun. You keep them in the schoolroom if you don't. You know, I'm just whatever, whatever. It's just really weird to me. Things have changed so much since I was young and I'm only 44, so I'm not even that old. So I'm sure that those of you who are older than me would have looked at some of the stuff that happened during my generation and thought, oh, they're babyfying those kids. But I don't know. I'm also part of Generation X, so I feel like we weren't really a babied generation. 
Um, I don't know. It's okay. But I just thought that was really interesting. And unfortunately, it's very cloudy today. So I don't, we're really not going to be able to experience the solar eclipse to its uh, fullest. I didn't even get, honestly, I didn't even get um, the special sunglasses or yeah, sunglasses because I didn't realize that we were in such, like, I didn't realize we were in 97% totality, uh, like as far as coverage goes. So I was like, eh, but it will be still, it'll be cool, you know, to experience almost complete darkness in the middle of the day. So yeah, that's happening in several hours. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about that's really great news is my son, Ian. So he's my oldest biological, but middle child, because we adopted our oldest from Ukraine when he was 13. So Sergey is our adopted child. Um, Sergey is now 27. He'll be 28 this year. Ian is my middle child. He will be 21 this year. He is engaged. He proposed to his girlfriend two weeks ago and she said yes. So they are planning a wedding for next year. So we've been having fun with um, wedding talk and getting ready to move out and be on their own and all that kind of stuff. So that's exciting. Uh, it's sad too. Uh, I literally spent, so they had told me that I needed to pick a song for, uh, the wedding dance for Ian and I at the wedding. And so I was like, Oh, okay. And I thought I'm going to listen to, so I used to live in, I used to listen to country music. So in 2002, Tim McGraw came out with a new album that was called the, I think it was like the dance hall doc doctors or something like that. Um, and Ian was a very colicky baby. I spent a lot of time not sleeping with him and a lot of time like holding him and trying to get him to quit crying. <laughs> well, that album, literally, I listened to that on repeat for many, many nights in his first, I would say, three months of life. And so I got onto that album last, last Saturday and I found the song I found the song that I'm going to, we're going to dance to at his wedding and it literally brought me to tears. It's a perfect song. The words are perfect for this. Um, I'll put a link to it down below so you can see the song if you'd care to look at that. But I just spent a good portion of last Saturday, not this past Saturday, but the one before in tears. I was like, crying, sobbing, then I would be okay. And then I would start thinking about it. And I would remember like just being out in the living room and playing the music and holding him and trying to get him to calm down and dancing with him. And, oh, it's so weird to have your kids grow up and become independent and get married themselves. It's just, it's really strange. Oh my goodness. It's, it's joyful, but yet it's also like, it's also sad because you don't get the years back. So for any of you young moms, I used to get really annoyed when older, wiser mothers would say to me, the years go by so fast, enjoy them. I used to think, yeah, okay, but you're not the one that's up with the screaming baby or you're not the one that doesn't have any privacy whenever and can't get anything done and can't clean the house because your kids are like holding on to you. But now I'm going to be one of those older, um, annoying women saying to you, younger mothers, if you know, I'm sure there are some younger mothers watching this podcast. Enjoy the moments. You will have lots of free time to knit and craft and clean your house as they get older. You, the years are going to fly by so stinking fast. You're going to wonder how that even happened. <laughs> you will not regret the moments you spend with your children. You will not. I'm very thankful for all the moments that I had with them. Um, more so now as they're growing up and becoming independent and moving out and moving on with their lives. And then the last thing that I wanted to just update everyone with, because I've had several people ask, is my medical update. I'm trying not to talk about it or think about it too much because when I do, I get slightly anxious, but I had the procedure to have the monitor implanted three weeks ago today, actually. So right now it's still a little tender, um, but it's mostly healed. So I have this cardiac monitor right in here, and this will be in for uh, the next six years which is how long the battery is supposed to last. And it will be monitoring my heart rhythm. And um, then that way the doctor can keep an eye on what my heart is doing. Since I did go on the beta blocker, I've been feeling so much better. I fought and I fought about going on that medicine. I felt really upset about having to go on a medicine because I really do like to do natural things. Um, but it has been such an improvement in the quality of my life because I went from having so many heart palpitations 
and just my heart going out of rhythm, like almost every day, sometimes, some days it was day all day long to just getting them occasionally now. And some days I don't notice them at all. I might be getting them, but they're not as strong. So I'm not feeling them. Um, so even though I hate that I have to be on that medicine, it really has improved the quality of my life. So I, it is worth it in that aspect. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that's the medical update because I've had people ask and I thought, yeah, you, Amber, you can't just not say anything about it because you kind of told everybody, so you probably should. It's just my way of coping with it, I think. I'm trying to not think about it too much because I don't, I just want to get back to living life normally and um, not thinking about the scary stuff, you know what I mean? And just trusting God. And um, something my pastor said recently, and he it was just in one of his sermons, and I was really struck by it because I have dealt with, you know, health anxiety and specifically regarding my heart for years. But he said something in his sermons to the point, it was something like, you are immortal until God says your time on earth is up. And I was like, that is right. So Amber, you need to stop worrying about dying and this heart condition taking you out and you need to trust God. <laughs> you either trust him or you don't. And the thing is, is I know not everybody is, um, you know, is believes the same way I do. But for me, there's a lot of comfort in that because I, I know according to the promises of scripture that I can trust God. Not that I don't question him, not that I don't have doubts, not that I haven't had to work through disbelief. Um, but I've also seen so much evidence of his love and his mercy and his goodness for me and things that he's brought me through in the past that you guys don't know about because they're not, you know, they're things that are too private to share on here. So, you know, I just have decided that not that I'm not going to waver and have moments when I freak out because I kind of had some of that over the weekend, but I just need to really trust God that he, um, has me in this and he has my family and he's going to take care of us and just worrying and being fearful of the future is not it's not bringing joy into my life it's not bringing peace it's not bringing the abundant life that I'm supposed to have as a child of God so I have to make that decision although it's very hard sometimes that I need to trust him and trust his goodness and his love for me so that is where um, I am on the medical front I have an appointment coming up I think next week with another cardiologist and then after that, I feel like my appointments are going to kind of be more spaced out, which will be nice because um, I'm, I'm really not a fan of hospitals, although I have been having a lot of exposure therapy. I've been joking about that, but <laughs> it's, yeah, I have. I've been in a lot of hospitals this year and had a lot of tests done. And if I would have had to do that, like, I, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. So that is all for today. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you guys so much for your comments, for your support in all the ways. Uh, the thumbs up always help my videos. Subscribing always helps, you know, just push everything out there into the algorithm that all social media platforms use nowadays. And um, yeah, you're, you guys are awesome and I appreciate you so much. So hopefully I'll be back in the next, you know, two weeks or so and we will announce the next winner and I will have more beautiful knitting projects to show you guys. So enjoy your knitting, enjoy your um, family, and whatever you're experiencing life right now. And I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.